Hello lovely people, I'm K3N and welcome to my channel. Um, before I get into the exhibition that I want to share with you today, I just want to say a truly heartfelt thank you to all of you who have offered me message of, messages of support, both here on YouTube and by private message, and those of you in the Facebook group, um, after I shared on Monday the, the life changes that I'm going through at the moment. Um, if you're new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, then apologies. But honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. You have all lifted me up and you're carrying me forward. And um, I look forward to sharing my life's journey with you as I go along. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So, anyway. <laughs> uh, last Saturday I went to visit this exhibition in Somerton in Somerset. And Angela Knapp and Cara Chambers happened to be two very, very dear friends of mine who are also very talented textile artists and they have this exhibition running until the 28th of September and um, I'm going to leave this on screen I've got a little video to share with you but I'm going to leave this on screen and I'm just going to read each of their artist statements to you sorry for my <clears throat> morning croaky voice and paint fumes I've been doing a lot of decorating um, so Cara Chambers Cara has always been a nature lover and a maker. Some of her earliest memories are from using her trusty Ladybird Book of Garden Birds to help identify the birds seen from her bedroom window while making doll's clothes out of the family cast-offs. She draws on nature and her own life experiences as inspiration for her art practice. Cara has a particular interest in exploring how time spent in nature and the act of slow stitching affect her internal processes. As I stitch, I am held by the thread. My creativity becomes a vessel in which to explore and express my life experiences, she says. Cara hopes that her work inspires and encourages the viewer to take time out in nature and connect with their own creativity. She works with old used fabrics, threads and natural finds. She believes that being self-taught adds a freedom to her techniques and loves experimenting with different media. A desire to create three-dimensional pieces resulted in a series of journal dresses which illustrate her experiences of grief, holding on to hope after trauma and her love of the land. After the loss of her home, it was a natural step for Cara to explore the concept of what and where is home. Following this theme, Cara has created nests and vessels out of reclaimed materials, natural finds and fibres, drawing inspiration from the best nest builders, birds. So that's Cara. Um, and Angela, Angela Knapp says, I am a textile artist and embroiderer based in Somerset. I have been exhibiting in solo and group shows since 2014, internationally and throughout the UK. This exhibition is inspired by the BTO Red List. The BTO is the British Trust for Ornithology, and the Red List is the birds most critically endangered. Many of the birds on this list were common when I was a child in the 1970s, but are now in danger of being lost, possibly in my lifetime if action isn't taken. Using embroidery, fabric and paint, my aim is to capture the beauty of the bird world, particularly those now categorised as critically endangered. Each new bird study begins with research, its habitat, migration patterns, etc. This is an important stage in bringing the bird to life, whilst also highlighting the challenges and threats the birds face. The story of each bird draws me in and is for a time all-consuming. The journey is continuous as each piece teaches me something new and always gives me inspiration for the next project. My technique has evolved since my first solo exhibition in 2021. The birds are now hand-stitched rather than free machine embroidered on the sewing machine. The sewing machine is still occasionally used to create intricate backgrounds with text or buildings and for larger scale bird studies. My aim is to invite the viewer to question the subject matter and the choice of materials used, to search for the story beneath. The work in this exhibition is stitched into a variety of materials, including pages of old bird books, ornithological records and indenture paper, to help illustrate the story and the plight of the birds. So I hope um, a lot of that um, resonates with you. It, they both very much work within the ethos of slow stitch and telling the story and so on with, with cloth and thread. So now I'm going to cut to um, the little video that I did for you and I hope you enjoy it. So we open with one of Cara's pieces. This is a little hair 
um, in a textile collage. This is at the top of the stairs as you enter the gallery. Um, their work is not, their work is all interspersed, so some will be Caras and some will be Angelas as we go around. Um, just looking at the label there. Um, and then as you come up into the gallery, sorry man, <laughs> um, here are some of Angela's birds which are on pages from old bird books. So she's found the entry for the individual bird. Um, well, first I'm going to show you these on the wall here. <laughs> um, I don't remember the names of all the birds, to be honest, and they're behind glass, so I'm doing my best to make sure they're not glary. There we go, I've angled it up. That's on one of the, the cards from a bird watcher from the 1930s and 40s, I believe, called John McKeoch, and she had access to the records, and she's obviously photocopied them. She hasn't used originals because they're precious. Um, this is a, a seabird called the Shag. She always gets such expression in the eyes of these birds, you know, apart from all the wonderful detail and all the stitching. Um, and here are the ones I was talking about that are mounted on pages from um, old bird books. So this, I think it's a corn crake. It might, I may be wrong. I'm trying to look. No, I don't think it's a corn crake because the dictionaries are. Anyway, let's just admire the beauty of it. And look at the eye. It's, I mean, that, that's the only thread, the eye. There's no glass or anything like that, but the life in it. This is my favourite. This is the lapwing. Um, I love the lapwing because my favourite book is Wuthering Heights, and there's a line in there about the lapwing, if you know Wuthering Heights. Bonnie bird wheeling over our heads on the moor, um, Kathy says. Look at the colours in that wing. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and she's used some of the pages from the book to make a nest. The idea behind this part of her series is that at one point these birds will be only found in books. They won't be found in nature anymore. They'll all be gone. Um, this, the turtle dove. Um, and when I lived in France, turtle doves are still common there. And they're protected, um, and, and quite rightly. Um, but here in the UK, they're, they're endangered. And if you hear a turtle dove cooing on a summer's day, it's it, it's a wonderful sound. I won't try and imitate it. I've got the sound in my head. I'm sure you can find it if you Google. But yes, endangered in Britain, the turtle dove. Once common, and not that long ago. You know, in my lifetime, I'm not that old. <laughs> it's, there are good people working to protect these birds, and hopefully, you know good will come. These are, this is now Cara's work, these are some of Cara's mixed media nests, all made with found materials, either natural found materials or man-made materials. Um, just absolutely beautiful. And she's studied bird's nests and how they're made and how they're created in order to make her own. And many of them are interspersed. I love this one. Sorry, cut myself off. This is called Knitting Oneself Back Together. And as you can see, it's old knitting needles, all um, threaded through some chicken wire with which she's made the form. So inventive. Um, and this next one, I believe, is called Temporary, Temporary Home. So this is all made of takeaway materials and, you know, all, all the... to represent the time when she was without a home, um, after she lost her, her home to fire. And this piece is so moving. This actually contains pieces of the leading from the, the window frames from her old home and other items that, that she's picked up. And they're a piece torn from a newspaper called The Homecoming. Honestly, she, she is such an inspiration. How, she, how she's processed all this that has happened to her through her work in a way that just speaks to you. <coughs> You see some at some frag. It was a thatch cottage that she had. Um, so some of the thatch as well. Um, this is called softly held. This beautiful little nest. I'm not sure of the plant material, <clears throat> but then inside the sheep's wool and two little their shells. Their found shells. Obviously, Kara would never ever ever take eggs from a bird's nest. They're only found shells that you're seeing. Better just say that. 
Sorry for my voice, I'll have a quick sip of tea while you're looking at this little beauty. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and now on this wall, here are some more um, of Angela's birds. Uh, these are called Another Night Lost and Another Day Lost. And I'll leave that there if you want to pause and zoom in so you can read it. You can zoom in on a tablet or a phone, you know, with your fingers, so then you should be able to read it. And here in the... I'm going to show you the title. This is Another Night Lost. And the words were stitched by machine, but the birds are all stitched by hand. So all those words, by the way, she stitches freehand on a sewing machine. Freehand. <laughs> She's incredible. Um, and the words are all the names of, of birds on the list, and then there are some of the birds flying round and round in the in the circle. Um, I'm going to zoom in on... I think that's a kind of duck. Angela's shouting at me, because she'll know, of course, exactly all about that bird. <laughs> Um, I do believe Angela's going to make a cameo appearance in a minute. She kind of photo bombed, video bombed. You'll you'll see her face coming in. I think it's, I think it's coming up now. I'm not completely sure. Don't don't be frightened. She's quite scary. No, she's not. She's not scary at all. Is she coming in now? No, not yet. <laughs> um, and this is another day lost. So again, the words in the background are free machine embroidered and their names of endangered. Here she comes. She's coming up now. I can see her. There she is. Hello, Angela. <laughs> um, yes, the, the words are names of birds that have that are on the endangered list. Yeah. And if you read them, I mean, they, they seem like common. They're common birds. They're bird names that those of us who live in Britain will recognize and they're all endangered. It's, sorry, a bit of white wall. Um, and down here we have some more of Cara's vessels, and these are called river sculptures. So these are, some of these are cloth twined. You can see there behind the clay, the form there, that, that's made of cloth twine. And then this, these are clays and soils that she's foraged from the river and um, sculpted around them. And this, this is all about flow, you know, how, how the, the movement of flow. And then obviously, <clears throat> sorry, the found roots and little feathers in. And it's all about the contrasts and the textures between the materials as well as the stories that they tell. I really, I mean, those of you who can do go and see in person this work because, I mean, the stitching on the on Angela's birds, it's really hard to show on the screen. Um, and the, the, the way these sculptures of Cara's speak to you. Um, but I hope I'm, you know, I'm doing my best to share with, with all of you that can't make it to Somerset. Uh, and here's the beautiful fireplace, lovely hamstone fireplace in the gallery. And on here are two more of Cara's nests, one with some eggshells, but the other has sewing materials in. I just found that so touching, a little nest of sewing materials. Um, and hanging above are, these are, um, the, the cards I talked about from the ornithologist, whose name I'm not going to try and say again, um, and she had them printed onto artist canvas. So some are in his handwriting, some are typewritten, and they're all entries about these birds, and they say things like common and abundant and things like that, and these birds no longer are. Um, and here's a little piece, again, if you want to pause your screen and zoom in so you can read it. Uh, this is about that gentleman, and there was another gentleman there called Stephen, I can't remember his surname, who did a lovely talk at the beginning about, about the birds and interviewed Cara and Angela for us both, for, for us all to, to listen to what they had to say. And this is another one, these pieces are called Legacy, I believe. I might be wrong. <laughs> But again, look at the face. I mean, that bird could just fly right off there and start flying around the room for me. It's just, in she's incredible, she really is. And they just look wonderful against the background of that those, um, and those old ornithological records. <coughs> and the movement, I mean, look, look at that bird is sweet. I feel like they're moving, or is it just me because it's early in the morning? No, it's because Angela's so clever. Uh, the way that little bird is just looking at you 
and the little beak and the eye. Um, I'm moving very slowly by the way so I hope none of you get seasick. Now these are old indenture papers which is, is an old word for contract and these represent the idea that we have to make a contract with nature um, and we have to keep our side of the bargain which is to protect her and her creatures and in this instance particularly these birds. I think this is a red pole. Um, but don't they look beautiful against that and they, that, that little one looks almost not demanding's not the right word, pleading maybe a combination of that, you know, like save us. Save us. And this is the puffin. This is the one that you'll have seen on the poster and it's very, very striking. I mean the puffin, it's <laughs> the puffin is such an iconic bird here in, in on in the British Isles. And he, they're endangered. It's a sea parrot is another common word for them, another common name for them, and you can see why. I mean, look at the colours on that beak and the wisdom in that little eye. And all all those feathers that you see are hand stitches, individual hand stitches. She's amazing. I shouldn't keep telling her that she's amazing because she'll get big-headed and she won't. She's a very, I've known her for many years and she's a lovely friend. Um, and this is the one of the spotted woodpeckers. I'm not sure if it's the greater or the lesser. And I couldn't read the label then. Again, I mean, just look at the texture in those feathers and the eye again and the beak and the little feet. The little feet as if he's, how she's used the, oh, how she's used the edge of the contract, I wanted to say. Um, these are some hanging vessels from Cara again, um, formed with natural found materials and um, some synthetic found materials. So, and they hang, and there, there was a light breeze, the window was open, it was a sunny day. You see how they're just swinging gently in the breeze. Uh, this one here, you see it's got baler, this is baler twine, that's what they use a lot here in the UK, and I'm sure elsewhere to hold hay bales and straw bales together. And unfortunately you find it lying about nature, and Cara on her walks obviously picks it up. Um, whether she wants to use it or not, I'm sure. Um, and this, I think these are pheasant feathers around the top here. And this little cornucopia of hope. And this beauty. Absolutely beautiful. This is called Amongst Thorns. And I love the colours in this one. And this is kind of like a blue tit's nest. You know those those little birds that have little nests sort of um, formed with a little doorway rather than an open nest. And it's got hanging in there the need for a safe space. And she's taken inspiration, obviously, for how she's formed them from birds' nests. Um, sorry about that. Here we go. <laughs> um, this is a little series of vessels. Cara takes meditative walks. I think daily, I'm sure, at least once a day. Um, and on her walk, she foraged, foraged whatever comes across her path and draws her to collect. Obviously, respectfully and sustainably, she picks up. And then she talked in her talk at the beginning about how then she very quickly, that's my finger for scale, these are tiny. Either that day or in the day or two afterwards, she made the little vessel. So this is a, a kind of a, a vessel journal of a month, of, of thir 13 months, which is a year actually, not 12 months, um, of her meditative walks. So each little vessel has a, a theme and a story to tell and they're all numbered and it was there in the list. A little cute poppy one. But you'll see cloth twine, those of you who've been following me for a while and uh, maybe were already making cloth twine or learnt from, from watching me. Um, you see that she's used cloth twine a lot in these. Well, that's got a, a found dead butterfly on it. I mean, it's, they're so small. Before I show you the last section of the video, which are Cara's journal dresses, I just wanted to read another little bit to you from, um, I'll put that back actually, <coughs> so you've got something to look at while listening to me. <coughs> Excuse me, while listening to me talk. 
Um, before I show you Cara's journal dresses, which journal the experience that she had um, a couple of years ago when she lost her home to fire, I just wanted to read you some of her words um, about them. So, the, the series is called Hollowing, Healing and Hope. And she says, um, I took a gifted white dress, dyed it in shades of darkest grey and then threw black ink at it having coloured, covered my tailor's dummy in plastic first. It felt good to literally throw paint with no real thought of how it would land. I just knew that the black splatters represented the darkest of times, the hollowing when the days are grey with grief and loss, the scouring of all that was and has been overlaid with blistering black. I kept a journal and lifted words from the text to print onto the dress, choosing the words that spoke of my keening despair and confusion before sewing blackened thorns to the collar, for grief is a thorny issue. One can feel literally pierced by loss whilst living amongst those that find it difficult to understand and talk openly about the grieving process. Hagstones represent not only feeling weighted down, burdened and harried, but they also hint at the transformation that has quietly begun in the depths of the despair. Healing. At the time of hollowing, one isn't necessarily aware of a lightning, a softness that enables the healing to begin, but it is there, hidden deep within the process. I wanted to find a way of symbolising this and the tools I needed to guide me along the way towards healing and finding hope. I decided to make my own version of a 19th century chatelaine, the traditional tools and the mark of status of a housekeeper. A set of short chains attached to a belt used to carry keys, scissors, pencils and other necessities. What were my tools and necessities? Um, a needle case. She chose a needle case. Being a textile artist, it felt natural that the first thing I chose was a needle case, but I wanted to make something that represented the new old me. On one of my many walks, I found a gnawed hollow bone. It felt fitting for this to, to become the bones of my stitching case. I wrapped it with thick grey woolen felt to hold my new needles and pins, made from blackthorn thorns, that symbolised protection and healing. A small twist of red thread hints at the healing that has begun, the sewing back up of a tattered self. A pouch. Next came the making of a small fabric pouch to hold gathered seeds and dried flower petals as a symbol of new life gently held, a promise for a new future, a birthing. Keys. My old house key. Sorry. <clears throat> My old house key and a large vintage key represent my old life and perhaps they hold the keys to a new life. Glass vial of ashes. Although at times I wanted to forget, to live in the time before, I knew that healing could only begin its work if I stayed in the present and was willing to carry the ashes of my old life with me, gently acknowledging that they are a part of me. So I found a small vial, filled it with ashes from the house fire and made a little stopper. <clears throat> rook feathers. Gathered from the fields, the rook feathers represent the ongoing dark process of grief whilst providing a visual reminder that hope can take flight once again, but not yet. Finally, I found an old rusted mirror chain from the house remains to hold my tools before attaching it to a pre-loved leather belt. Healing is also aided by loved ones' support and understanding, and so the final addition to the dress was to show on to sew on patches of fabric that had been gifted to me following the fire, a patching up with tender stitches. Hope. With healing, hope begins to emerge. There is a lightening of the darkness. Days are no longer a smothering black. Now they are multi-shades of grey with the smallest of silvery threads running through them. I found an old cotton torn blouse and dyed it in shades of grey before visibly dining with silver threads that tears and holes. It felt as I sewed that I was beginning to heal and move towards being able to hold hope once again. I knew that a gentleness, a softening of my gaze, self-compassion, was a necessary part of the healing process. But even though there were still times when I felt weighted down, bleak and exhausted, I needed to be compassionate and patient, allowing the work of grief to continue. I lifted out more words from my journaling, choosing ones that hinted at the transformational work of grief that there was now the emergence of hope as the healing continued. Again, I printed them onto the fabric, choosing this time not to use black ink, but one with a purple hue. I wanted to find a way of conveying the desire and need to be, held, to be softly held whilst gently holding onto the seeds of hope. And so I decided to make a collar to drape the blouse in the softest of wool rovings 
before adding more silver threads and a collar of foraged wood pigeon feathers. A visual reminder that you can rise gently from the ashes in your own way. Perhaps not as a phoenix, as the saying goes, but, but as a new old self. Your day is now coloured with pearly greys and the softest of pinks, holding the silvery strands of your future lightly in the palm of your hand. <coughs> Apologies for the... <laughs> I think you can um, maybe relate. Um, Cara has got such a way with words and such a beautiful soul and um, Angela is also wonderful in the way that she really feels for these birds that she represents with her art. Um, and I'm very, very honoured to call them friends. So now I'm going to show you um, Cara's three dresses that she shared at the exhibition and um, I hope you enjoy seeing them. And since I already talked about them, I'm just going to let you look at them, so I'm not going to talk and I'm not going to put music or anything like that. I think they just speak for themselves. And this tray holds some of the objects that she foraged from the ruins of her burnt home. And there is a list called All That Remains of the Items. There were two other pouches, but they'd obviously been sold and nobody had got round to clearing the empty plinths away. The second dress, I believe, contains some little scraps of fabric that she salvaged from what was her former um, place where she used to work. And in this tray are again more foraged, um, for, I keep saying foraged items, sal salvaged items from the house and she's formed river clay around them and she calls them memory stones. And this is a photograph of the dress in the burnt out ruins of her former home. Of course, she lost all of her work as well, or all, all the work that was in, in the home. She lost all her stitch work. Um, I think there are a few pieces. The, the three pieces that she had hanging with the animals were in a gallery somewhere. And the last dress you're going to see was with us at CQ West because we had an exhibition coming up. So it was, it was saved but the rest she's made in the last two years. Little lace collar with a found um, catch, window catch, I think. And 
and a pocket. So <clears throat> coming up now, this is the dress that was with CQ West. So this was made earlier and it wasn't in the house, so it wasn't, wasn't burned. And this is called For Love of the Land. And this is a dress that she actually wore on her honeymoon, I think about 15 years ago or so. Um, and it's stitched and dyed and painted. And um, I think there's some applique with all the wonderful natural plants that she loves. And around the hem she's used some, um, I think, natural earth pigment to simulate the dress been dragging in the mud. And in the net petticoat there are trapped actual pressed dried plant materials. I'm just showing the label. And the buttons are oak galls. And the collar is made of foraged lichen and when the exhibition's over she will return the lichen to the woods and it will be fine. Lichen is very, very precious, but it's also very, very um, resilient. See the little dandelions? I think that's called turkey work. I think Marion on Marion's World has shown how to do that not long ago, but I mean Cara's obviously done that several years ago. <laughs> Um, and that's some cow parsley. Marion, I hope you're watching because I think you would love this dress in particular. And here's a photograph of Kara wearing the dress, sitting on a gate and smiling. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'll put the links to Angela and Kara's social medias. I believe they both do Instagram, so I'll put those links down below if you'd like to go and look at more of their work in detail and maybe, you know, leave them a message of, um, you know, congratulations or whatever. If you like their work, you know what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> Words. Words sometimes. So the details. It's called Hanging by a Thread and it's on from the 17th of August until the 28th of September from Tuesday to Saturday. The opening hours on Tuesday are 11 till 5 and Wednesday to Saturday is 10 till 5. The gallery is closed on Sundays and Mondays. That's really important. I wouldn't want you to go there on one of those days and be disappointed. And it's the Ace Arts Gallery in the Marketplace in Somerton in Somerset, England. If you go to Somerton and go to the middle of Somerton, you can't miss it. And there's lovely cafes and, you know, little arty shops and galleries all around. It's a nice little town. It's not a big town. It's the ancient capital of Somerset. Um, summer town. Anyway, <laughs> so there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you again so much for your support. I really don't know what I'd do without you. And um, I look forward to you joining me next time for more Cloth Tales. Bye-bye.